Hi, my name is Leo. Welcome to the episode about CERN LHC. Few days ago, I attended the event organized by CERN itself and I decided to share my excitement with you. The event was called CERN Masterclass, the Higgs Particle Hunter. First, what is LHC? LHC stands for Large Hadron Collider, which is the biggest and the most powerful particle collider today. It's owned by the European Organization for Nuclear Research, known as CERN, the organization which gave birth to many inventions, such as the World Wide Web, for example. So LHC is a system for colliding particles with aim of experimental physics, that is, to discover new particles. It uses an unimaginable energy of a beam of 7 tera electron volts, meaning 7 times 10 to the power of 12 times energy of an electron moving across an electric field of potential difference equal to 1 volt. This amazingly high voltage and energy is applied to accelerate particles beam in order to have enough high energy to even make the particles gotten from these collisions connect into new ones. CERN Accelerator is a system of tunnels located underground which have shape of a circle. We should know that to accelerate a particle enough to interact with other particles, we should give it also enough place to accelerate. It does get higher and higher kinetic energy. So having a circular shaped accelerator rather than an ordinary linear accelerator makes us possible to accelerate particle as long as it achieves desired energy level. Just to mention, not only we have to constantly apply the energy, but also it's critical to incline particles beam and focus it in order to have the most efficient collisions. This is done by dipole and quadrupole magnets, which are all the way along the accelerator tunnel, which create a magnetic field, which then makes charged particles incline at a circular motion trajectory, either in clockwise or counterclockwise way. The very design of LHC is interesting. As CERN accelerator has been upgraded through decades, there were designed circular tunnels of greater and greater ready, so the last and the biggest one is the LHC. LHC is, as the name says, Collider of Hadrons, particles made of tiny quarks which are held together by strong nuclear force. The interaction which is carried by gluons charge exchange particles. There are many types of hadrons, such as mesons, which are made up of one quark and one antiquark, baryons, which are made of three uh, quarks, and then there are also s s some other types of this. Nowadays, quantum physics has discovered many particles, and the elementary ones are located in the standard model, which both classifies elementary particles, which make up matter's mass, and interaction particles. So we have fermions, which give mass to matter, such as quark and antiquarks, which build up nucleons, it has protons and neutrons, and take part in strong interaction. Then leptons and antileptons, responsible for electroweak interactions, such as electrons and positrons. And finally, there are bosons. Gauge bosons, which are force carriers, that is, particles responsible for four fundamental interactions. Photons, it is gamma, are responsible for electromagnetic then interaction, then we have gravitons for gravity interaction, W and Z, both plus and minus bosons for weak and gluons for strong interactions. And finally, the most famous boson, the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is, we could say, a building block of the Higgs field, the field which has a non-zero value in vacuum. It has a great mass and therefore an enormous amount of energy compared to particles of similar volume. It was in CERN in 2012 that this so long desired particle, 
whose existence was hypothesized even before, has been proved to exist, which was one of the most important and the most exciting discoveries since the beginnings of quantum physics. What we today still don't know, the secret which hasn't been solved so far, is problem of missing mass. We do know, according to calculations, that the particles we've discovered so far make only about 4% of the whole universe, and that the other 96% consists of dark matter and dark energy, whose properties we do exactly know, using law of impulse conservation and other relations. However, we haven't recorded any experimental proof of their existence so far. So this is the next big mystery, which is put as a challenge in front of us, young scientists, to explore. There are seven experiments in CERN LHC, which use detectors to analyze different particles produced by collisions in the accelerator. The biggest of these experiments are ATLAS and CMS, and the others are ALICE, LHCB, TOTEM, LHCF, and MOEDL. CERN is currently mostly focused on these LHC experiments, but there are also important experiments being conducted on other CERN accelerators as well. Today, I'll talk about the basics of CMS and will show you an example of results and how the data are analyzed. CMS, or compact muon solenoid, is a particle detector designed to detect a wide range of particles and phenomena produced in high-energy collisions in the LHC. It has cylindrical shape and consists of five different, five different layers tracking and measuring different particles. These data are then used in analysis process to reconstruct what's happened in a collision. Here you can see a slice intersection of CMS detector, which has a cylindrical shape, so its intersection is a circle, and here we can see a part of this circle. First, what we can see are five layers, silicon tracker, electromagnetic calorimeter, hadron calorimeter, superconducting solenoid, and muon chambers. In each of these layers, some kinds of particles are stopped and leave their track in them and thanks to these tracks we can then reconstruct what's happened in the collision. Then we have this solenoid, which makes, produces a magnetic field. We can see two points of magnetic field. This point of four Teslas, 40, where magnetic field goes into the plane, so goes in direction away from us, and then in this uh, point on the right hand side we have two Teslas magnetic field going in the direction to us so in the direction also perpendicular but opposite to this first one of magnetic field and uh, below we have five kinds of particles we can detect in this detector so first are muons if you have a muon it first goes through silicon tracker. We can see it inclines. In this, in, in this case, it's muon which inclines in clockwise way, meaning it's charged. The particle which is neutral, it would go straight forward through the silicon tracker. Then it goes through all of these layers, and finally, it leaves its trace in the muon chambers. So muon chambers are the place where muons are detected. And we can see that in these muon chambers it goes in the opposite way, counterclockwise way. So it's oppositely inclined because of the opposite magnetic field applied. Then we have electron, which goes also through silicon tracker and is, and is inclined because it's also charged, but is stopped and leaves its track in electromagnetic calorimeter. Photon is uncharged, not charged particle, so it has a charge of zero, therefore it goes straight forward through silicon tracker, it does not incline, and leaves its track in electromagnetic calorimeter just as electron, for example. Now we have a charged hadron, 
so it is charged, it in inclines in silicon tracker, and then it stopped and leaves its track in hadron calorimeter because it's hadron. Neutral hadron would go in the same way, so would be uh, would be stopped in the hadron calorimeter, but would go straightly through silicon tracker because it is neutral, it is not charged, so it wouldn't incline. Now we are in iSpy WebGL CMS experiment e lab. Here we can see a CMS detector, and inside it we can see yellow lines which represent collision, it has decay. Now to only set some things in order for easier analysis. So first, make this equal barrel visible. So equal barrel is actually electromagnetic calorimeter uh, layer, where electrons and other, some other uh, 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 photons and some other particles stop then turn on turn off uh, tracks of collision and turn on missing et missing et is this purple dashed line which actually represents a reconstruction of muon or neutrino uh, trajectory and if we click it this pt meaning transverse momentum if this transverse momentum is greater than 20 giga electron volts, then it is most probably neutrino which was going this, this way. So it is greater than 20. Here we have about 34 giga electron volts. It's most probably neutrino. But first set this. And just to mention that there are many types of decays, but here we are going to deal with only eight types you can see here. And uh, if some, if we have some of some type which isn't one of these eight types, we would say we don't exactly know which kind of decay it is about. And now we can see here electron, muon, and missing et. So we've already said this missing et is greater than twenty giga electron volts meaning it's neutrino we also have electron and muon muon goes in this direction so in counterclockwise direction meaning it is negative mi minus and ju just let's see in which direction and which inclination has this electron just to see it a little bit closer to be able to analyze its direction we can see that it goes in this direction. So it goes in clockwise direction, meaning it is positive. So it is E plus. And now to say which type of collision we have here. So we have electron, which goes, which is positive, muon, which is negative, but we also have neutrino. So we cannot exactly say which kind of collision it is about. In this example we cannot say that. But let's take another example. So here we have an another example. Here is missing ET. 49 uh, point 9 giga electron volts, meaning it's most probably neutrino and here we have muon. We just have to know in which way does this muon go in order to say if it is uh, W minus or W plus decay. So let's see. We can already here see that it goes in this way. So it's inclined in this way meaning it goes in counterclockwise way and therefore it is minus. So it is mi minus, mi on minus. Therefore we have as product of this decay we have neutrino and mu on minus. Therefore we can conclude that here was 
a W minus boson which decayed into this neutrino and muon with negative charge. In this video you've learned the basics of particle physics, about the CERN LHC and how the data from CMS, compact muon solenoid detector, are analyzed. Thanks for watching and stay with us.